Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, we're going to continue looking at scaling and shifting sine waves to get them in a form that matches the real world electrical signals that we see in AC systems. And in this video, I'm specifically going to talk about how we shift the sine wave left and right on the time axis in order to implement what we call a phase shift. So at this point, we have seen how we can scale the period of a sine wave by applying a scaling factor to this equation right here, the sine of 2 pi ft. And if you remember, so we have sine of, let's say, x, which is the base function, and that is a sine wave that goes from 0 to 2 pi. And this argument right here is in radians. Okay, but that doesn't really help us much uh, when we want to talk about, you know, real signals. What we really want to do is we want to talk about something that varies with time and has a period t. Okay, and what we did is we figured out that we could say, oh, I could have some electrical parameter that varies with time, and I could apply this factor of a two pi f. T, and that would then give me something that repeats every period of on the time axis. And the reason the reason I remind you of this is because what we did with this scaling factor factor is we converted this into radians. Okay, and that was important because the argument of the sine function is defined as radians. Okay, so we had to somehow convert it so that we could use time as our independent variable and convert that over. Now we're talking about a phase shift, which is simply where you move, you translate the sine wave left or right, okay? And so we're gonna have something where your sine wave, for example, might not cross at zero, zero. It might cross a little bit shifted to the right or the left, or what we call translated. And so this little guy right here, this phase shift, is we call it the phi <coughs> and phi, sorry. And what this is, is it's just a simply a phase shift left or right. And you specify the phase shift technically within the sine function in, once again, radians, okay? And so well, that's fine and dandy and everything, except once again, we're faced with this situation where the argument of the sine takes, some, takes in something in a form that is not one of the electrical parameters that we typically use. We use degrees, okay? So degrees is what we use in electrical engineering. And so again, we're faced with this situation where we need to somehow convert the way that we talk about electrical signals, AC signals, into the mathematical form of radians in order to plug into this equation. Well, it turns out it's not terribly difficult. So what you do is you basically have V of T is equal to sine, and then we still have our two pi F T, but then we subtract phi right there, phi right there, okay? And fine, that's it. <laughs> okay, and what's interesting about this is that you could, a lot of times when you first see this this thing in here, you see it in terms of like pi over two or, you know, three pi over four, and that's how you see it in like math textbooks, okay, when you learn about that stuff. Again, that's nothing more than, this is just simply how you specify radians, right? Uh, but we want to convert this now to degrees. Before we go any further though, let's talk about this. The form of this equation is that that is a negative sign right there. And the way that it works is if you have this phase shift, which is positive, okay, so the value you're gonna plug in is positive, so like pi over two into there, you will have two pi ft minus a value. That means you are going to translate the sine wave to the right. Okay, so the sine wave will go from here and it will shift this way. Okay, so you would get something like that. If you have this phase shift it is a negative, okay, so you say I'm gonna apply something like negative pi over two, well then that negative is plugs into there and you end up getting a positive uh, or an addition in the argument. So you'd have something like two pi ft plus pi over two and that results in a phase shift or a translation to the left, okay? So all we really need to do is convert between degrees, which is the way that we use, the way that we talk in electrical engineering, into radians. And it actually is very simple because we can use this ratio right here. Two pi radians is equal to 360 degrees, okay? That's it. We can, and that is, 
essentially a conversion factor because I can also say that 360 degrees is equal to two pi. And it's like, yeah, that's it. So you just apply this however you want in order to get the units to cancel. So immediately what you see is people don't like to have like two over 360. So immediately what people do is they say, we got to divide that out to stay kind of standard. So you have pi over 180 and that's equal to 180 over pi. And all we do is we can, we use these factors to convert degrees into radians. So let's do an example. Okay, let's say that I had, uh, let's say that I had something where I want a phase shift of, uh, phase shift of 90 degrees, okay? And I want to plug that in, and also, also let's just say we had a frequency of 10 hertz, okay? So what would that look like? Well, I could come down and start writing my function as this. I could say, let's say it's voltage varying with time, and I'd have sine of two pi 10 times t, and then it's minus, because that's that was the original definition of the equation. And now all I gotta do is I gotta convert degrees into radians. So I could do it in, in the equation itself. I could actually say 90 degrees, and now I'm gonna multiply it by whatever conversion factor is needed in order to get those to cancel. And in this situation, since 90 degrees is there, we want, 100, we want degrees on the bottom. So you get pi over one, 80, okay, and so then when you do this, the degrees cancel, and essentially what you're left with, if you did want to write it out, is you'd have sine of 2 pi 10 d minus pi over 2, okay? So now this is where it gets a little interesting, where you look at something like that, and you're like, man, this looks so foreign, because I have my 2 pi f here, and then I've got pi over here, and it's like, what, what is going on here? Well, just remember, this was a conversion factor, a scaling factor, so that we could insert something of interest so that this sine wave repeats every one period. Well, then this was specified originally in degrees, but then we had to convert it into radians because remember, this base sine function always has to have an argument that's in radians. So it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to do something like this. This is why it's, it's confusing. This is what always confused me. That's, let me show you why. Confuses me, or it confuses me because sometimes you'll see like in books, you'll see like two pi 10 t uh, minus 90 degrees, okay? And you look at that and you go, okay, I understand what that means, right? Th there's a phase shift in there. But this cannot be entered into your calculator directly, okay? It is just a way to like kind of document the way this waveform is supposed to look and it makes total sense. Now let me show you. Like here's a textbook, right? So here's a textbook right here. <laughs> okay, and this is teaching people about how to learn about sine waves and cosines. And it's like, look at this right here. You've got sine 4t plus 30 degrees, okay? And then right here you got 4t plus pi over 6. And you you introduce these two things in, in a textbook and you're like, what? is going on because I could I always got so confused because I would try to enter this directly in my calculator. No one ever told me that the argument has to all be in radians. You can't interchange these things. And so while this is just in here to kind of just demonstrate it's like, well you got a positive thirty or you actually have a negative thirty degrees phase shift, which means that the sine wave is going to translate to the left. But this right here cannot be entered in your calculator at all. Okay. So it's just kind of a documentation. So that's that's really only the confusing things about phase shift, okay? So they're pretty, they're relatively straightforward. Just remember, you have to convert from degrees to radians if you're going to have a complete argument that's in radians, all right? And you might say, well, what, can I put my, my calculator in degrees? You can do that. But you only you got to remember if you do that you got to have your entire argument in degrees and now you're in a weird situation where you're trying to convert the time varying component of this into degrees and it's like it doesn't make a ton of sense okay so what we do in electrical engineering is just stay in, stay in radians okay stay in radians and make this two pi f t minus phi and this argument right here is radians all right that is awesome and where you use this a lot is when you try to like extract what the function will be of a waveform from a graph uh, because when you look at something like this it's like we can basically calculate what the period is and then find the frequency but when you do phase shift it's like it's hard to know like how many pi over what it is uh, you could take the phase shift and divide it by the period and you would get a percentage and then multiply that by 360 but let's just look at how we could do this because when I look
look at this, I can, I can tell right away that there's a sine wave that starts here and it goes like that. And I know that it's shifted to the right by 90 degrees. And so I do have a phase shift of 90 degrees right off the bat. And so I, this is pretty slick. So how would I write the equation for this? Well, first, first and foremost, let's get the period. So let's go over to this point right here, which is about, you know, trying to get that on there is about like, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> I wish you could arrow this Google thing here. Oh my, okay, there it is. So let's let's call this, uh, it's got this phase, or not, it's got this point right here is 0 0.0209, let's call it seconds. And then this one over here is really small, so it is like, uh, let's call it, 0 0.00426, okay? So my period is going to be, I'll come in here and I'll do 0 .20, no, no, 0.0209 minus 0 0.00426, okay? And so my period is 0 0.01664, and so my frequency is gonna be one over the period, and so that's gonna be, Let's go ahead and flip that. So we come in here and we go flip. Oh, it's 60. <laughs> 60 hertz, you can probably know why. And then I have this translation here to the right of 90 degrees. So when I go to write this out, okay, so if I go to write my function, here's the way that I would write this in there. I would say V of T, assuming this is V, uh, is gonna be sine multiplied by two pi 60 times T, and then it's minus, and here comes the phase shift. But I can't put it in as degrees. I gotta put it in as radians. So what I'll do is I'll go 90 degrees, and then I'll correct it to radians, or convert it to radians by going, have my little conversion factor of pi over 180, okay? And so then that comes out to be sine of two pi 60 T minus pi over two. And if I multiplied out this right here, what I'd get is, Let's just multiply it out to check and prove that I'm right here, or that I'm not lying. This is actually 377 times t minus pi over two, okay? And so then now if I go back and look at this plot, take a look at this. So I scroll up and lo and behold, I have this plot is actually sine of 377 times d minus pi over two. So it's we extracted exactly uh, the exact equation for that. So key to it all though, radiance <laughs> okay that is it awesome let's do one last example where it isn't obvious what the phase shift is by looking at it so here's our here's our example and i can't really look at that and go oh that's negative you know 45 degrees or that's negative 90 degrees or positive 180. so i have to figure out i have to actually measure what the phase shift is and i'm going to measure it in time Okay, and the time is basically when it's not shift, when it's not offset, uh, you're looking at the center point. And so right here, we can kind of see that it's like, okay, so this thing right here has a shift of it of negative 0, 0,1,0,6. Zero, okay, so I have negative 0,1,0,6. Zero, zero, <clears throat> not just that, but 0, point, <laughs> point 0. So point zero, oh, this Google, <laughs> zero, one, zero point zero one is what this is, okay? And so I have this shift and that's great, but it's in seconds. And so what I have to do is I have to put that in, in terms of one cycle. So what I do with that is I basically come up with, I need to divide the uh, delta T shift by the period. And what that's gonna give me is that's gonna result in essentially a percentage <clears throat> of the period. So if I have a period right here, so this is the period, and I shift it <clears throat> just a little bit like that, what I wanna do is I wanna divide these two so that I get a percentage of one cycle. And then what I do, <clears throat> is I multiply that by whatever cycle I'm using in terms of either radians or degrees. So if I multiply that percentage by two pi radians, then I will get the radians of the shift. And if I wanted to see it in degrees, I could also multiply it by 360, and that would give me the uh, degree shift. But since we're using radians, let's just go back here and let's do it like this. So I'm gonna come over here, and V now is actually equal to the delta shift, which is gonna be 0 0.0106, and I'm gonna leave the negative off right now because I know I shifted it to the left so I know this is going to be a negative uh, no I'll leave it in there negative 
<laughs> so now what I got to do though is I got to find the period, right? So now I know that that's my phase shift, but it's also what I can use to calculate the period. So if I come over here, now I'm at 0.188, so 0.188. <clears throat> and so I need to basically find the period. Now, since that's a negative number, it's essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 0.188 minus <clears throat> a negative 0.01. Okay, <clears throat> and I end up with something that's really close to uh, 0.2. Okay, so it's basically 0.2 once all those reminder, remaining digits are in there. Okay, so I have my period. So let me let me come down here and make sure I record my period. So this is 0.2 seconds, and I I put that into this little expression right here and divide that, and that gives me a ratio that I'm going to multiply by 2 pi to get the number of radians that that shift is. Okay, so let's come back here. <clears throat> 0 0.0106 divided by 0.2 equals, multiply that by 2, multiply that by pi, and I end up with a shift that is like uh, 0 0.33, and it's negative, okay? So it's like, okay, <clears throat> that's pretty good. Um, and I probably had some rounding error in there, uh, but it's gonna be close. So I'm gonna come along here, and now what I wanna do is I finally have everything I need, and let's go ahead and write the expression. So what I'm gonna say here is V of T is equal to uh, sine of two pi, now I need my frequency, so I need to come over here and I need to go uh, one divided by 0.2, which is 5, okay? So then my frequency is 1 divided by 0.2 is equal to 5. So I put that right there, and then I have t, and now I'm going to go, is it a minus or a plus? Well, it's minus phi, but the phi was negative, so it's actually plus 0 0.33, <clears throat> okay? So now that is now should be the expression. So let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, what, did, what was the original expression? Lo and behold, it's two pi times five times t, and then zero plus 0 0.3, we got three, they said four. So we're close enough, we're within a couple percentage. Okay, so we did it. So that's how you would actually measure the phase shift and then convert it back to radians to plug into the final expression. Okay, that is it. That is how you phase shift a sine wave using the electrical parameters and see it.